an inconsiderately cold January in Lesby and we're making a film. A film about Lesby, which it's possible to know very well and not at all. Lesby is a place, not a city, village, or township. Just an agglomeration of people with similar jobs. These jobs, by and large, are not in Lesby. Lesby is located near the southern tip of Calvert County, Maryland. If Calvert County is a top-down view of a foot, Lesby would be the proximal phalanx of that foot's middle toe. There is a particular quality to the air here that makes it very hard to compose concise analogies. We have a historic landmark, the Cove Point Lighthouse, multiple parks, including the Calvert Cliff State Park, a nuclear power plant, a natural gas plant, and a golf course, the latter of which is known to lesbians under 40 mostly for a series of vicious goose murders committed on the premises by some local teenagers. We also have several shopping centers where lesbians and passage through exchange money for goods and services. This is the most popular one. This is where all the kids go. Look at them. They're out of control. Calm down. You're disturbing the peace. Don't you talk that way to me. I wasn't born yesterday. No, I'm not a fucking narc. Maybe you're a fucking narc. That's true, a narc wouldn't be smoking PCP out of a dog skull. That's a good point. Well, take care. This is Mount Lesby, originally a pile of dirt made during the construction of a shopping center that was never actually completed. And this is the man-made lake, where lesbians fish and swim. It was closed for a few years due to a toxic algae infestation. Things are back to normal now, I guess, since it's been reopened. Several people have told me that the algae was released by a deranged cabal of fundamentalist Quakers, but I have some doubts about this. There are roughly 1,900 core lesbians, a total that balloons to over 12,000 when one includes the nearby Chesapeake Ranch Estates and Drum Point, which share the same zip code. I happen to live in the former. Lesbians are relatively diverse racially, relatively secure economically, and relatively conservative politically, to go by the number of streets named after ballistic missiles. Lesbians who hail from Lesby proper have found some ways to differentiate themselves from us posers and piggybackers in CRE and Drum Point. For example, they have a highly idiosyncratic sense of humor, a mixture of elaborate Joycean word games and the sort of grimly ironic gallows humor more commonly found in Eastern Bloc countries. Their jokes are complex enough that the conversation with them could be dangerous. If you begin talking to a true blue lesbian about the weather, you may wake up several hours later unsure of what your name is or how shoes work. Lesbian humor has been classified as a Schedule One narcotic by the DEA, though enforcement has been difficult, for obvious reasons. The cliffs along the coastline are being eaten away by beetles. Soon the houses along them, once tenanted by the well-to-do but now condemned, will topple into the Chesapeake. So, why are we making a film about Lesby? Fortune and glory, kid. As I mentioned before, I live in Chesapeake Ranch Estates, with my parents in a neighborhood populated almost entirely by older people who own planes. My parents are the youngest among them. No other people my age live here. I have no siblings. Did I mention there's an airfield in my front yard? There's an airfield in my front yard. Mine is a house divided. There's my side. And my parents' side. They rarely leave their room. I don't really know what they do in there. Sometimes they go to Disney World without me. I don't really know what they do there either. We seem to exist on separate planes of reality that only occasionally overlap. For instance, in their reality a bag of Tylenol, a box containing aromatherapy inhalant and massage oil with penetrating vapors, and a tub of organic dry mulberries go together well enough to be within inches of each other on the dining room table. When I'm not at home, I'm at school. I'm an English major at St. Mary's College. One of my favorite writers is Faulkner. I'm doing my undergraduate thesis on him. I like movies too. I like to watch them and then go online and give them star ratings. 
Several of my friends also do this. We spent hours deliberating over our ratings, and then hours arguing over them, as if operating on some tacit belief that on the final day we will be judged by how many stars we gave and to what. Generally, my interest in a movie rises in inverse proportion to the number of outwardly dramatic things that happen in it. For example, I've been taking care of a plant for about a year and a half now. I think of it as a symbol for my getting my life together. I look at it and think, I have a plant now. Things are getting better. I also speak French. I can say things like, Salut, je me panique. De café, s'il vous plaît. Donnez-moi la colonisation, connard. I'm going to read some lines from a local poet, the one semi-notable poet that to my knowledge ever emerged from Lesby, Eric Barclay Backhouse V. An inveterate booze hound and closeted heterosexual, he considered himself a member of the New York school, despite having been in New York just once when he was eight. He wrote only two poems. One was a mammoth epic of 8,000 lines, the manuscript of which was lost in an electrical fire that also claimed the life of his hermit crab Lenore. The other, much shorter poem, I found sandwiched between pages 237 and 38 of a used Lepidopterology textbook. The poem is titled, simply, Lusby, and goes as follows. Lusby, you are the world to me. You are two worlds, in fact. One is tiny, and another is endless. You appear dull and anonymous, and bland and stale, and also faintly irradiated like a microwave DM. And yet within you is an altogether different Lusby, yearning and burning with a holy fire that licks and licks and licks again my swollen intellect till it bursts onto paper with demonic fury. The next time I have a nosebleed, Lesby, I'm going to write your name on the towel floor of my bathroom with the blood and laugh about everything. You, me, Lenore, especially Lenore, and her ridiculous death that I will never stop feeling awful over. Lenore being the only one who could talk to the angelic weevils that hold Congress in my scalp. I hear them chittering and running up there all day now, only abating when you speak up to tell me about a new way light can pass through the branches of a eucalyptus. I don't even know if there are eucalyptuses around here. I just like the sound. Eucalyptus. 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 The rest of the poem is a bunch of unpronounceable symbols. Possibly a rough draft. Lesby sometimes speaks to me too, but only in dreams. Usually it gives me fatherly advice like, be a man, stand up and be counted, use protection, and here, I'll show you how that piece of industrial equipment works. Domino, 
Most of my dreams here lately have been very mundane, to the point where distinguishing between them and reality is difficult. The dreams tend to involve specific objects. For instance, I tore a hole in my wallet in a dream and awoke to find my wallet still intact. I dreamt there was milk in the fridge. Upon waking, no milk in the fridge. But recently, I dreamt that there was a sealed bag of meat in the kitchen, and when I woke, there was actually a sealed bag of meat in the kitchen, which has cast me into some doubt as to whether I was dreaming at all, or if the dream is still ongoing. At the lake, a spectral dancing woman can sometimes be glimpsed on overcast days. And this is the bush behind which the neighborhood boys used to masturbate to the spectral dancing woman, usually in teams of four to seven. I met some of my best friends behind that bush. Supposedly a commune existed in the woods for a couple years in the 70s. A bunch of countercultural types, hippies, yippies, and the odd situationists assembled here and tried to build a better society founded upon the principles of equality, fraternity, and LSD. They'd sneak down to Solomon's Island in St. Mary's and stage wild freakouts intended to awake the locals from the capitalist spectacle. They never succeeded, but they had their fun. There's no trace of them now, not even a written record. Amnesia is the lesbian drug of choice. They sell it bottled at the local apothecaries. On the far edge of the woods, there's a 5x5 five five foot patch of ground where anything can happen. The scientific term is a QPS, a quantum possibility space. There's no telling what a visitor to the QPS will find. At various times, I've seen a matchbox, a copy of Jude the Obscure, my quantum double, and a framed photo of Anne Dvorak. Sometimes when I find myself in a Beckhousian mood, I like to hike up Mount Lesby and just feel things out, see what vibrations I can pick up. One time on the footbridge at Calvert Cliffs, I thought death was following me. He wasn't, but I haven't been back since. Then I thought I saw death in a pack of ramen noodles.
It was just an ant, but I haven't eaten ramen again. I don't care much for death. Death was a terrible idea from the beginning. I hope I never die. I hope all the elderly aviators in my neighborhood never die. And I hope their planes never get so much as a spot of rust on them. I want to stand between Lesby and death and say, No more, sir. Not this place. This place is better than all that. We have a combination Baskin Robbins Dunkin' Donuts, and we are not afraid of you. After the completion of the initial version of this film, we realized we had almost entirely neglected the history of Lesby. Lesby's origins, its architects, its evolution over the years. Internet searches yielded little information on these matters. But after asking around, we managed to secure the address of a Dr. Feldspar, the only historian to have devoted his life specifically to the study of Lesby. One day in June, we went over to see him. Dr. Feldspar wouldn't let us in, because of the bees. I'm unsure whether he meant there were bees outside he didn't want to let in, or there were bees inside he didn't want to let out. In any case, our one lead was a non-starter. Oh well. We tried. By the way, my Faulkner thing turned out pretty well. Thanks for asking. One day I'll meet a woman even taller than me who will stick me in her pocket and carry me off to the mountains where we will breed an army of enormous children. In the meantime, there is you, Lesby, whom I've known for 16 years and still have much to learn about.